One of the most surprising and powerful forces for attitude change is a phenomenon called cognitive dissonance, first proposed by psychologist Leon Festinger in the late 1950s. Although we're not often aware of it, we humans have a strong need for internal order and consistency. We like to see ourselves as sensible, rational, and reasonable people. But when we're faced with evidence that contradicts this, it makes us feel uncomfortable, and we'll go to great lengths to reduce or avoid this feeling of discomfort. This was the focus of a classic experiment done by Festinger and Carl Smith in the 1950s. They wanted to see what would happen when they tricked people into doing something that made them feel uncomfortable about their self-concept as a reasonable person. What they did was set up a situation where people's opinions didn't match their behavior. They had 60 participants complete an hour of tedious, boring tasks. One of the tasks went like this. Participants were given a tray and 12 wooden spools. They were instructed to place the spools on the tray, take them off, and then put them on again. They were told this was a performance task, but in fact it was designed to be boring and tedious for the next part of the study. The participants were randomly assigned into three groups with different instructions. The control participants were business as usual, but the two experimental groups were asked if they'd be willing to help out with the next participant, because the regular research assistant called in sick. Their job was to go into another room and tell a new participant, who was really a confederate of the researcher, that the task was actually really fun. So they basically tricked them into telling a bald-faced lie. The $1 group were hired for the small sum of $1 to do this, whereas the $20 group got a whopping 20 bucks, which was a lot of money back in 1959. Then all groups were asked to rate their own enjoyment of the task on a scale from minus 5, dull and boring, to plus 5, interesting and enjoyable. So how much did the three groups of participants actually enjoy the task? Think about that for a minute and make a prediction. The controls didn't lie, so they gave their true opinion of the task and rated it slightly negatively. So this can be considered the baseline rating for the boring task. The interesting results are ratings by those who lied and said it was fun. Those that only got $1 for doing so actually enjoyed the task and on average gave it a positive rating. On the other hand, the $20 group rated it close to zero, very similar to the controls. At this point, you might be thinking, wait a minute, why didn't the $20 group report the most enjoyment? After all, they got a lot of money. According to Festinger, these participants already had a fantastic reason for lying. They got 20 bucks. They didn't need to feel cognitively uncomfortable about lying because they had an awesome but slightly unethical reason for doing so. It was the $1 group who likely felt uncomfortable about lying, since they really didn't have a good reason for it. This feeling of mental discomfort that happens when we're faced with inconsistencies in behaviors, thoughts, and feelings, or values, was coined cognitive dissonance by Festinger. Cognitive dissonance is not any type of discomfort. It's a cognitive tension that arises when we hold two or more contradictory beliefs, or if we behave in a way that contradicts our beliefs. According to this theory, when we're faced with cognitive dissonance, we can use one of three strategies to try and reduce it. We can change the behavior, change thinking to justify the behavior, or add a new way of thinking that is consistent with the behavior. Festinger's participants in the $1 condition probably used the second strategy. They had to come up with a good reason for telling a lie. Let's take smoking as an example. Everyone knows that smoking's bad for you, especially with the enormous warnings on cigarette packs. Canada actually has some of the most graphic warning labels, and tobacco manufacturers are required to display these on every pack. So why do people smoke in the face of this overwhelming evidence? As a former smoker myself, I can tell you one reason is that it's really hard to quit. So what goes on in the minds of smokers? They engage in a behavior, sometimes 10 to 20 times a day, that they know is bad for them. This likely creates feelings of cognitive dissonance, and as shown by research from Festinger and others, we do all sorts of things to make that feeling go away. Here are some strategies that smokers might use. They might change the behavior and quit, which is the point of the warnings on the packages. In fact, cigarette sales declined a bit after the warnings were introduced. But it's hard to quit, so not everyone is capable or willing to do this. So another way to deal with cognitive dissonance is to change the cognition surrounding the harms of smoking. Sometimes people cherry pick an example, like, my Uncle Ollie has been smoking since he was 10 and now he's 80 and healthy as a horse. Yet another way to deal with cognitive dissonance is to keep the original thinking that smoking is harmful, but add a new cognition, like, sure, smoking is bad, but it helps me deal with stress and stress is much worse for my health. 
What this example shows is that sometimes it's easier to change the attitudes than it is to change the behavior. So next time you're faced with a situation when what's in your mind doesn't match your behavior, take a minute to think whether you're changing your attitudes just to avoid feeling mental discomfort. You might benefit from taking a step back and determining if you're making the right decision. So in a nutshell, that's cognitive dissonance, one of the most peculiar but powerful forces for attitude change. 